to go. I've been, I, you know, I worked on, I, I worked on old Chevy since I got my first car in 73. Well, I had a Buick. First one was a Buick. And then after that, I went to Chevy. Uh, but uh, that's what I, I loved, you know, I learned to work on. And I was always into hot rod. And then I got into four wheeling. And um, my 64, I've got a 60, 76 Chevy Blazer 4x4. And then I got an 83 Dodge van, good times van, with all fixed up that my uh, uncle gave me. And that is actually the one other type of vehicle I hadn't worked on because a buddy had a Dodge Charger with 318, 73 Dodge Charger with a 318. Wasn't her Charger. 318's not a hot rod motor. Uh, they run better than you might think, but uh, that was during the small gears, you know. And so was the, you know, 83. Well, his was like 78 or something like that. It had already started this smog crap. And 83 was right in it. And, uh, but that thing runs pretty good, actually. I was really surprised when I drove it home. Uh, it's got a four barrel uh, out of the factory, and it gets, he, my uncle said it got 17 miles of a gallon. I never have driven it hardly at all, and uh, needed some work. And, and my Blazer's what I always drove. I bought it in 92, 91, 92. I've kept it all these years. I've had, well, let's see. That's, I had a, I had a brand new, Chevy Silverado pickup in 2000 for about two years, and I had to get rid of it. Just about, I only owed $3,500 on it, but I had to sell it because I couldn't make the payments. Uh, but uh, so I went back to driving the Blazer. But uh, the Blazer, what was I going to say about it? Oh, I hardly drive much at all anymore in the last 10 years, and uh, or even longer, really. But... Um, so I was getting working on it to get it to fix, you know, ready to inspect, get inspection a couple of years ago, two, maybe three years ago now. And the horn wasn't working. It worked and not work, worked and not work. And I did everything. I think, I don't know if I, I, I either pulled the steering wheel, because that used to be a common problem. It would be this the contacts in, in, about, in the steering wheel behind the blinker stuff and all that. I may have pulled it. I can't remember now. But I searched for three, two, three, four days. Never dawned on me. To check the ground, the thing is old, rust all you know. There's rust here and there and everywhere, and the dugum grounds. The grounds going they go straight from the horn to the, uh, not the firewall, but the where the radiator mounts, right in in the grill. You know you got to you can't get to it very easily, but we on that one it's better than regular cars and stuff. But yet the you have to reach, I think, up from under the bottom or something to get to it without, unless you want to take everything apart. But anyway, uh, uh, I took the took the ground uh, nut, you know, bolts off of it, and cleaned everything up. When I realized they were perfect, I was about ready to pull a horn off of the uh, Dodge. You know, I thought the horn had gone bad, <laughs> and it was going to be real hard to do. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that because the horns aren't that expensive. I was just wanting to figure out what's wrong with it and get it inspected. I wanted her to get it inspected. While I was feeling good and able to do the work, and it, I got it all ready, except uh, yeah, I got it all ready, and I went to back it out. And I had been running it, but I hadn't drove it. I'd just been running it, and uh, and I hadn't drove it hardly any. You know, I like drive it one, literally once or twice a year, and uh, you know, the gas uh, that dad go my call in the gas. It it uh, it draws water. It attracts water, and so then you get water in your gas tank, and then, and that alcohol really eats. It, it corrodes aluminum. You'll see that uh, white oxidation and every. Carb I got a Holley carburetor. It's all aluminum. Well, all carburetors are aluminum anyway. But I got a Holley 600 on it. I bought brand new back in '92, right after I bought the truck, and uh, it was just clogged up with white <coughs> oxidation, aluminum rust. <coughs> and so I'd already I had rebuilt it once about five or ten years ago so I you know I already know how I know exactly how to do that carburetor and I used to rebuild carburetors once in a while the old I learned how to tune uh, quarter uh, four barrels uh, quarter jets I mean quarter I had a quarter I had a 70 SS Chevelle back I got in 76 I think I had it for quite a uh, until about 80 or something like that uh, but I learned how to tune that quarter jet on it, and uh, it's pretty tricky. But once you learn it, it's not that bad. Actually, I find it 
I never did get it perfect, I will say that. It would still bog a little bit uh, off the line, but if you're going 30 miles an hour and you drop, drop down on that thing, it would spin them wheel, wheels until you hit second gear. It's a three-speed automatic. It wasn't the one with the bucket seats. It was the one like just under that. It was 350 horsepower. It was the fastest car I ever had. It was like they say, the kids say, these. it's real horsepower, not the way they, not the way they rate it these days. Uh, I forget a lot of these young guys. They can tell you, well, if it was 350 back then at that the way they rated it, then it'll be so much more the way they rate it now, you know. But of course, there's nothing compared to a thousand horsepower car, you know, eight, seven, eight hundred horsepower out of the factory these days. But uh, I never topped it out. The front end started lifting at 125. The front end, and that's pat way on past the speedometer reads. You know, it reads 120. Uh, but yeah, I, I could, it looked like 125 to me. I really don't know exactly how fast this is going. But the front end starts lifting up and it starts floating. And I, that's the only time I got scared going too fast. <laughs> but what happened was the, it had a vinyl top on it and it had kind of started coming loose at the front and I had glued it down with some contact cement. It peeled it back like almost completely off. And it went, boom, it sounded like, I thought something had blown up. I thought it had a blowout or something at 125, you know. And I was like, no, I'm not... Uh, I'm not dead, <laughs> you know, I'm not rolling, I'm not going side to side. Finally, I realized what it was. I, I, I heard the flapping of that, you know, that uh, vinyl top. I glued it back down, didn't go quite, I, I don't think, I don't, I only went that fast again, maybe once or twice after that. But, um, grounds computers the, the, the I, I didn't learn that until the last few years really about the computers and cars the ground is like it makes them go nuts i just did a lot of reading and watching videos on them i can't stand working on cars with computers i don't own a and you know a reader or any of that stuff and my brother got got a couple of them and i watched him use them but and I don't like, you know, if you're good at data logging and comparing data and all that, you'll like that. But I do not like that. And I don't, I can't keep that stuff in my mind. Uh, I'm lucky to remember my phone number and my, you know, stuff like that. But my, uh, hardly anybody else's I don't know, you know. Actually, I don't think I know any phone number right now. Of course, my memory's getting a lot worse, but. Right now, these, you know, like the things I did used to remember, all I remember now is um, I got a Google phone number. And that's the only kind of phone number I got. I don't have, I got mobile phones for cameras, but I don't use them as phones. I don't need it. I don't go out, you know, places. So I have a Google phone number just because it seemed cool when it came out. And it's been useful. I use it. And, uh, and then my home phone number that this, I live back in my house where I grew up, um, my mom's house now. So. Uh, it's the same phone number from when I was a kid, you know, I know that. <laughs> and I do remember my driver's license number and social security number because I learned that when I was, when I got them, you know. And, and you used to, you had to give them out all the time. They used to even ask you for your social security number for some stuff, you know, before it, people started stealing them and using them to get your credit and all that stuff. But, uh, I'm jabbered way plenty now. Well, I'm glad I found out what I found out, but God, dog, I hate it when a project goes like that. It's, it turn, you just wanna, you know, usually when I get these old computers, I just turn, I turn them on and they run and maybe the fan makes noise or they're full of viruses or something like that. And I thought, you know, I just wanna see if it runs. If it runs okay, I'll stick it over there and set the monitor on top of it. And then one day when I feel like it, I'll mess with the software. But this was the opposite. And now I'm intrigued, though. Now that I see that it's a 3.2 gigahertz Intel, not not just a Celeron. It's only a dual core, but that's okay when it's 3.2 gigahertz. It might make a great server. Be more than you really need. I've ran, I always I've, for years I ran. Uh, well, like that, the IBM was 2.5 gigahertz. I had another one. Uh, let's see what else did I run? Now I can't remember. I ran two other desktops for several years each. And uh, the other one was like 2.2, another 2.4, something like that. I think I ran that Net Pro Max. It has an, uh, a Zeus motherboard in it, and it's an old Celeron. 
it was a well, Jeff gave it to me. It uh, it was a surveillance system. It had a really cool uh, like five input video card for the surveillance cameras, but it's the old style with the BNC connectors, analog cameras. I've never even had one of those cameras. I took the card out and put it in my blue FIC, I think, but I never did get anything to hook up to it. But uh, <clears throat> now I've got, you know, five, two five me megapixel video uh, high resolution, you know, pretty, uh, almost not quite 4K, but uh, higher than, ten, bigger than, bigger than 1080p, but not quite, quite 4K, I don't think. But um, it's really sharp. And uh, so, you know, I don't really want to go buy some analog cameras. When it's old stuff, I love to get it if somebody wants to give it to me and I'll mess with it and learn about it. And maybe if it's useful for something, I'll... I used to always want to take all the old computers I had and put whatever Linux would run on it and then give them to people. And But people don't like to learn new operating systems. Everybody's stuck on Windows. I, get, I built one... Uh, Jeff, yeah, he he lost he lost his 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 computer got full of viruses or something. Yeah, I think it did. And, oh, I think he, I don't know if that's one of them. He had uh, he kept overheating. Uh, the it had uh, it had a separate GPU chip in it, and it would overheat the thing and burn and burn up all the CPU paste. And first time I put new CPU paste on it and everything, and then uh, it still he told me he told me about it after that. I didn't work on it again. He uh. I told him, well, I think if you find a way to, you know, put some kind of heat sink on that, you, it'll fix it. And, and he said, yeah, somebody else told him that, <clears throat> somebody where he worked. Works in a hotel, so he meets people from around, you know. And if some kind of tech guy, <coughs> <coughs> he had soldering irons, you know, that he carried with him and everything, fancy stuff. <coughs> heat, heat, uh, heat soldering guns, air soldering guns. And he soldered a penny on on that thing and it worked pretty good for a while but then it started overheating again I think <clears throat> but I don't know what he ever did with it but then the one I worked on was an MSI laptop he lost his windows I guess it got full of viruses or something he lost his windows key he said well I can put Linux on it for you and so I set him up a really nice Linux system with every he's into audio and video like I am and and uh, so I set him up every kind of application I thought he would enjoy but he just he'd play with it a little bit here and there, but he never got to using it. And then he decided to start using it, but it was out of date. And he tried to update it, and he broke it. He broke the operating system because he didn't do it quite right. <clears throat> and uh, he uh, he found his somehow he found his license again, his Windows license, put Windows Seven back on. It. I think he's I don't know if he's still using that or not. I think he is. And that's getting pretty old now, but it was a good running laptop. And I had learned that from the old laptops that uh, people had given me, my buddy, other buddy had given me. Uh, <clears throat> that, and I, I learned it online too, you know. <clears throat> but I, I did have some and I did, <clears throat> did see, <clears throat> see it in real life. <clears throat> First thing you do if you get a used laptop, open it up. Uh, hopefully you don't have one that's real hard to get to the CPU. A lot of them are really easy. You just take take the cover off where the RAM is and you can get to it. And just learn how to do it right. Don't just do it without knowing what you're doing. You don't want to bend those pins or anything. <clears throat> you got to take the... Uh, actually, you don't have to take the, the processor out. Just get the heat sink off, off of it. <clears throat> and clean that. <clears throat> if that paste is dry, just clean it off and put some new... If it's <clears throat> not too dry... It needs to be pretty sticky. <coughs> kind of like bur <coughs> dying. <coughs> Got to get a cough drop. <coughs> needs to be kind of like brand new peanut butter. Not you know really really soft. <coughs> uh, I have heard people putting peanut butter on them, but I wouldn't do that. <coughs> that CP paste is cheap. It lasts for years. <clears throat> and uh, put that on there and make sure the fans are working and cl clean the fans. That's the first. What happens is the fans get full of dust <clears throat> and they don't. Nobody cleans them. And you can clean them by just blowing air through them. You know, blow blow it in one side of the. You know, in the in one port and it'll usually blow back out the same one. 
Usually only one port. We usually don't have to take them apart to clean them. If you just do that every, even if you just once a year, then unless you're in a du really dusty environment, you might need to do it every three to six months. But uh, <clears throat> if they're starting to overheat, then try cleaning the fan. If that don't work, put new heat heat sink paste on it. It'll probably be all right, unless it's a bad design like that one he had. This is a video on the <clears throat> TV I made yesterday. I was going to see. Okay, boy, every video I watch, it wants to, it, it, it's going, the auto thing, you can't turn it off. And it was, they're going to like 320p. I'm having to change every one of them. Just to watch it in 1080p. <clears throat> and I found one video. <coughs> it was. <coughs> <coughs> in the highest 4K that's <coughs> that I think is available. And I, cu I couldn't play it last night. I had to. I could go one up above. There was like two or three above 1080. And I could go. <coughs> I could go like one up above 1080. I don't remember what it was, 1440 or something. And I could watch it just fine. It sure was clear. This now this is 720p. Actually, I, I use a 1080p palette, <clears throat> but my cameras that I stream over the Wi-Fi are only 720p. I can't do that any more than over my Wi-Fi. I don't. I just started that up. I don't know why. <clears throat> <clears throat> Now see, there's a desktop. That's a lot clearer. You can't tell that from that camera, though. It's probably just a blurry mess of oddball colors that don't even look right. Yeah, it looks blue in the preview, and it's black. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't. I don't know why. I, I just thought of opening it up. But. Uh, <clears throat> I know. Uh, I know when it's when it's time to quit trying to get stuff done. It's when I just have no more concentration left. <laughs> if I'm making a video, that's when I know because I just start rambling. I can't even stop. So, um, I will. I wanted to get this TV up and in its place so I wouldn't have it over there in my way. But it's not bad. It's a uh, livable <clears throat> for a couple of nights <clears throat> losing my brain here I'm starting to put things away <clears throat> like uh, <clears throat> like I don't have a video to end here <clears throat> I know the sound is horrible when I cough because this can I'm going straight to the camera I mean these lapels help make it quite a bit better this camera actually has the worst sound I've ever seen it heard in the camera but uh but the lapels do help quite a bit but uh i think it's got like some funky you know um sound auto leveling software because it'll it squelches everything it's really strange and it, it lets all the background sound in the, the onboard mic but then it'll squelch the talking it's really crazy it sounds like a cb radio squelch literally if you've ever heard one of them, <clears throat> how it's trying to cut out the background noise, that's what it sounds like. And uh, I've got a noise getting compressor on my, on my uh, <clears throat> Behringer connected. To, I've got a Behringer V amp 2 that I bought years ago, long before I ever got my. Got my. Uh, <clears throat> Where's it all at? Yeah, there's my Behringer V amp too. I got a noise gate compressor set up in that. It goes, my SM58 goes into the mixer and then through the Behringer and then to the computer. But I didn't want to turn on that other computer and do all that setup. I knew if I started, I'd end up setting all my other two cameras and wireless mic. What I do is I use two phones with wireless cameras and say, I bought this to try to. Um, try to get uh, 
you know some higher it is higher resolution but it won't do 4k over the well of course you can't do 4k over usb it does <clears throat> the one step that's one step above 720 but not 1080 i think is what it is <clears throat> that it, and that's all you can do in the usb cable <clears throat> it does have wi-fi but have not it's not meant to <coughs> connect <coughs> To a desktop <coughs> machine, and that's what I want to do. <coughs> uh, I can do that with my phones, <coughs> just with an app called IP Webcam. But uh, <coughs> and I do two of them with video and one with audio, so I have wired. <coughs> but like I was saying, I have those two <coughs> security cameras running all the time now, and they're using up quite a bit of bandwidth. So all that together something's always dropping out you know it's usually the, one of the cameras or or the mic yesterday didn't know it when the mic dropped out for like 30 minutes and then the whole last 30 minutes of the video itself i got off of the wi-fi mic because it was you know it just went dead <clears throat> and uh it's i <clears throat> often don't even know really what happened or i mean sometimes the app crashes or the phone shuts down but that none of that happened um, it's just something in the Wi-Fi, I think. <clears throat> and uh, I do know when, like, okay, the reason I think that is because after that, I made a three-hour and 45-minute video yesterday, I think it was. <clears throat> uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> But I just did this today straight to the camera to just hurry up and... <clears throat> get you know i wanted to get work done and i was kind of not gonna video it and i thought i really want to video this it might be a good little project <coughs> and uh, it turned out to be a big project <coughs> but uh i'm shooting 4k in, at 48 megapixels right now so i thought you know <coughs> i one video i did in 4k it actually looked pretty good the one outside so i thought i ought to try that again <coughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> well the sounds are going to be those coughs are going to be terrible i know that <clears throat> probably be a lot of rattling noise when i move around too without a compressor or a noise gate <clears throat> and obs studio what i used to stream with the wire wi the wi-fi mic we same two lapels going through a phone over the wi-fi <clears throat> Uh, there's compression and all that, and noise gate in OBS Studio software, and uh, so I get pretty good audio on either the lapels or the SM58 when I'm doing my live streams. And I like that because then I don't have to go back and upload everything. <clears throat> but uh, sometimes you have trouble. I always do a backup, save a backup video in case something goes wrong. <clears throat> sometimes my stream drops out, and but my video will still be recording to the computer. So, uh, um, <sighs> and the smacking really, it's nice, isn't it? And we smacking on our cough drop. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know why I'm trying to explain that stuff. <clears throat> but, it's kind of odd reading on something that big. You actually have to turn your head to see left to right. <clears throat> but get it further away, I won't have to do that as much. <clears throat> but um, it just took me 15 minutes to get it set up with big enough text to read it. <coughs> <coughs> this means I have to quit. <coughs> see, my body makes me quit when my brain do <coughs> I have enough sense to do it. Oh yeah, I can't. I don't know how to turn it off with this. Only I know how to turn it on. If I hit the red button, it just shuts it off and breaks, shuts the camera off and breaks the video. The time it doesn't get its time code in. How long it is? It'll still work, but some players can't play it. But I have to get back here and hit that button on the back. All right. <clears throat> 